Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Dr. Brenda Mondragon. In today's video, I'm going to show you how I perform lymphatic drainage on myself. Before we get started, please consult with your healthcare provider before implementing any of these methods. I've gotten a lot of requests from my patients and my viewers on how to perform self-lymphatic drainage on themselves. So I'm going to demonstrate how I do that on myself. Granted, I am not everyone. I tend to be very heavy handed on myself because that's the pressure that I like and I find for myself is the most necessary. However, if a patient is coming in with an acute injury or any kind of acute condition where there's a lot of inflammation, I would of course take a much, 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 much lighter approach because of the level of pain that is involved. So again, please consult with your healthcare provider before performing any of this. I would say very traditionally, lymphatic drainage is performed in an acute stage of injury, not as part of a long-term recovery process. However, I find it very, very beneficial for myself and for my patients to perform varying degrees of lymphatic drainage. You'll see a lot of healthcare providers start out with the neck, and while that's fine, I personally find it better for myself to start out with the thoracic duct, the, and the origin of the thoracic duct is here. It's a structure called the cisterna chile, and it's where the thoracic duct originates, just below the diaphragm. So generally, deep breathing, when we take deep breaths, that helps pump that cisterna chile. Also, the abdominal aorta sits in front of it, and that pumps and beats, and in general, it it drains and circulates all by its little own self. But I personally think it can always use some assistance. Sometimes I feel like it gets congested and blocked and stagnant, so I like to start there first. So again, the cisterna chile originates here just below the diaphragm, and it travels up and drains into the left subclavian vein. The thoracic duct drains the lower extremities and the left the upper left hand side of your body. The right upper side of your body, so basically from here to here, is drained by the right thoracic duct, which also dumps into the right subclavian vein, and so here. So I can understand why a lot of practitioners like to start here. Okay, enough anatomy. There are areas in the body, actually, that you need to be mindful of when performing this, where these tubules of lymph drain into or kind of dump into on their way up to the subclavian veins. Your head and neck more or less drain into here. You're going to see me kind of focus on draining towards those big plexuses. Groin, armpits, around the neck. Here to here, kind of here, here to here, and here to here. Now, if you've been operated on, if you've had surgery on any area, sometimes you have to find these little circuitous routes to drain into these big complexes on their way up, okay? Does that make sense? So we're going from the outside in towards the torso of the body and then back up, and then it goes back into circulation, heart, etc. Your kidneys are also uh, very important in lymphatic drainage, so that is also a area that you're going to see me focus around. Okay, enough anatomy. Now I'm going to demonstrate. The oil that I'm going to use today was actually recommended to me by a massage therapist. She uses this on her recovery or patients that are in recovery from major surgery. So I learned about it. It's called bio oil. You can find it on Amazon. I'm not sponsored by it, obviously, but they sell a version of this online. This is kind of a little pricey, so I might switch to coconut oil as needed. So I just start out with some deep breathing. You're breathing from the diaphragm. So if I could show from this, it's kind of like you want to create a space underneath your rib cage right here. So I'm going to kind of go up on my knees here and show you how to do to kind of access this cisterna chile area. So you're gonna kind of create a gap right here, right underneath the sternum, and place your hand there. I first like to go down and kind of open it up, it's probably getting pushing away part of the large intestine here, but 
I'm just pushing down and push down and breathe and push down pushing in Again, if that's too involved, you can just use light pressure. I've been doing this for quite a while. That's the kind of pressure I need. You can just place gentle pressure and focus on that spot right underneath the sternum. I can already feel it opening up. Now I'm going to push up. And my hands are right in this, right underneath the rib cage right here. Pressing up. There's these inguinal uh, plexuses here. You can just kind of gently push into them. Again, from about halfway through the abdomen down, there's these watershed areas where if one area isn't working that well or is congested or trapped, it will share a route with another group. But you do kind of want to glide into there about five to 10 passes. Again, for YouTube purposes, we're doing this very modestly. <laughs> so bear in the very bottom of the foot. Just get a good grip and pull. Gently, you will feel your joints separate. Arch of the foot. Balls of the feet. I'll show this on the other side. Right across the tops of the feet. And then in between the toes especially the first and second. Around the back of the ankle, and then work your way up. To do this to yourself, you do have to have quite a bit of flexibility. If, if you don't, please get somebody to help you. Again, I'm getting the two main regions on the back of the leg. There are two, and then one big one on the front. Now with a bigger region like this, it's sometimes a little tricky for the hands to get all of this. So I use cupping to aid me. And it's 
kind of uncomfortable at first, but you get used to it. Need a little bit lighter pressure, there we go. This is allow the cupping allows me to get all of the surfaces. Again, the general direction up into the groin area where those lymph nodes are. This one always gets me every time. The first thing that you can do in an acute injury once you've been cleared by your healthcare provider is just gentle, light touch. Sometimes just the very, very lightest of touch and that will help the nerves regrow, especially those peripheral nerves that have been almost choked off from supply by the, the level of inflammation. So sometimes just gentle, very, very light, 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 light touch. Just enough to get those nerves re-stimulated. When you get the clearance from your healthcare provider after, or your surgeon, you can go deeper. I don't like twisting, just pull. Curl down as you are able, across the top of the foot. Ball of the feet. The feet are almost like the fingers. So treat it as such, okay? Ideally, after this, you'd want to put your feet up and let the lymph go back up towards the lymph nodes in the inguinal region. Do something gentle like this. Once you get used to it, you can, you know, get some blood going. If you find a soil region, you can just leave it there. Let it marinate for a little bit. Also, a really good thing for if you have any kind of fat necrosis from inflammation is to kind of roll the skin. And that really helps to break up any kind of adhesions in the superficial layers. Kind of rolling that superficial layer, pulling at any kind of pockets. Glutes, everything would come around to the inguinal region, the back from about the belly button down, also inguinal region, and then from about here up, you're going to be moving up into the armpit, okay?
would be really good is for somebody to go in between here. There's quite a big plexus in the thoracic region of lymph that drains into that thoracic duct. So ideally, you'd want somebody coming through the rib cage and pushing back, kind of raking the rib cage. It's a little hard to do to oneself. It just depends on where you are in life. I wouldn't be wearing this, but you want to take this axillary region. It's really important to massage up into the armpit. So you would then proceed to do the arms. You could do the hands, arms, all the way into the armpit regions. Then you would do the neck. Even the heat from your hand, there's deep cervical lymph nodes here on either side, so you can either do it alternatively. Or at the same time. Ideally, you wouldn't have these straps blocking the lymphatic drainage. Cuss the chest. Again, coming up. So treat the face as distal or further away from the source, just as you would your hands to this region. The chest is also distal. Just depends on the type of therapy that you're performing. really to wrap all the way around. We finished with the face. If you're afraid of giving yourself really red marks, use a little tiny one. More or less, you want to drain the forehead down to your temples. They do make cupping for that.
So yeah, you start from in the middle. <laughs> you go down. Imagine you could do both at the same time. This is me in rapid fire. <laughs> uh. Get a little bit more of olive oil. <laughs> a little more olive oil. whole bunch of glands underneath the chin and underneath the mandible here. I personally take them back up to here. Then sometimes the eyes feels really good in the corners here. Sometimes to grab the eyebrow and kind of shimmy this like this. Trigeminal nerve is here. Frontal sinuses are here. Maxillary sinuses are here. You can tap. It's called tapotement. And then don't forget behind the ears as well. So that is all I have for you today, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. If this video helped you in any way, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel. Thank you guys so much for watching. Take care and be well.